on that side. I don't understand. It's pretty simple. You cannot have a camera on this side of the barrier, so you need to step to the other side. What? I'm, I'm unsure why we can't have a camera here. Why did you say that? Yeah, happily. I don't have a camera yet. I just like you to tell me where to go. You actually, I'd like to see it before we go to the Please step to the other side. No! <laughs> not protesting. We're filming not a public service. Oh, it's a protest issue? We're not protesting. We're not protesting. We're not protesting. Well, since you asked, I decline. I'm not going to acquiesce to your request. I'm not interested in you asking. You said you wanted to see. I'm telling you where you want to get your answer. Trust me. Where do you get where do you get yours? Folks, sir, all I'm asking is that you just What's step your name, up. sir? All I'm asking you is to step to this side. My name is Dojito. That's it. That's all. This is about blocking with these people's access right now. Maybe if you ask him nicely, he'll do it. Maybe you say please. I'll certainly get out of the way. Say please. So all I'm asking you is to walk this way. Ask him nicely. Instead of demanding it. Be courteous. This is not a demand. Just ask nicely. Say please. No, I'm trying to it said you need to move. You told us you need to you move. Need I have to be a informed. Phone. How about you just say please? Okay, so could you just be nice? I'm asking so that I can get that information out to other people when they come down. I'm here. telling you, you can go well, to be nice. <laughs> can you be nice? No. Don't trust me. No, no, do I'm you telling know? you where to go and ask. Do you know? I'm telling you where to go and ask means you don't trust me. If I don't know, then you don't want my answer. You don't trust me. Go inside I'm and ask asking find out for, for the facts, not the opinion. Folks, I'm telling you the way it is. If you don't want to trust me, that's fine. Okay, but you've been informed. Please. Informed! Thank you. Just see if it gets better. Of course. Your piston is cheering. I wish you would have said please. He was friendly. Does that look good on my face? Here, I'll help. Double light, we come closer. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. It's kind of dark. There you go. That's good. Are you right in my group? Oh, wait, I, I, I'm being told. Oh, that's not bad. That's good. Oh, uh, let me switch it to auto focus real quick. Well, shit. I'm freezing. My battery ain't gonna last all day, John Bush. <laughs> Touch my face. Fuck it, we'll do it live. On the screen. Touch my face. <laughs> <laughs> to auto focus on my face. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Alright, hold on. Are you ready? And we're filming. Extra views if we get arrested while we're filming. <laughs> Alright, hold on. I'll, I'd like to get this in one take, so uh, yes, I would start try. it over if you would. Please. Alright, ready? And you're good. John Bush here with the Sovereign BTC podcast and the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and Activist updates. We've partnered with Watch My Bit. You could check them out at beta.watchmybit.com. It's a video service that uses Bitcoin for micropayments. Similar to YouTube, except there's no ads and content generators can utilize it in order to uh, gain revenue for their art. And we're partnering with them to bring you coverage of the Ross Ulbricht trial uh, concerning the Silk Road. And basically we're gonna put these videos up, exclusive videos every single day, bringing you coverage. And what you can do is pay Bitcoin on these videos and the proceeds will go to support the Free Ross Legal Defense Fund. So we're encouraging you to check out this really cool tool and uh, while you're doing it, check out these video updates for exclusive content. Uh, and also you'll be able to contribute to Ross Ulbricht. So I'm gonna give a recap of what took place today. Uh, the day started off with the jury selection, uh, which was rather uneventful. And uh, there were several jurors that indicated they uh, work with NYPD or they have families that are Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the judge asked them if they would be biased in favor of the government, and they said no, which I find, find hard to believe. In my opinion, anybody that goes to public school and doesn't have some sort of eureka moment uh, is likely going to be biased in favor of the government. Uh, long story short, a jury was selected. It's pretty even between men and women. Uh, there's a lot of African Americans, a couple Latinos on the jury. Uh, after the jury selection took place, 
Uh, we took a break for lunch. Uh, we came back for the opening statements. At this point, it looked like a whole gang of prosecutors or staff here showed up in the courtroom, so we had to go to a spillover area where there was like another 30 people in suits that seemingly worked for the court. Uh, and the prosecution went on with their opening statement. Uh, basically, they're making the case uh, that Ross Ulbricht is Dread Pirate Roberts. And they said that throughout the course of the proceedings, they were going to be entering all sorts of evidence that would indicate so. Among the evidence, uh, they spoke about when Ross was arrested at a San Francisco library with his computer open, logged in, this is what they say, logged in to uh, an administrative back-end page that was labeled Mastermind. And uh, something that I didn't know, they, the way that they busted him or knew that he was logged into Silk Road, uh, allegedly, was uh, he was chatting with someone who he believed to be one of his employees, and it ended up being an undercover FBI agent. And while he was chatting with this undercover FBI agent, the undercover FBI agent was communicating with the plainclothes FBI officers that were following him around that day. And they told the undercover officers that he was chatting with them. The undercover officers rushed in to arrest him. And they found on the computer that that chat was in fact open, so they say. Uh, additionally, on the computer, they say there were logs that Ross had been keeping since the beginning of his uh, supposed endeav uh, alleged endeavors uh, that indicated all sorts of transactions and trades. Uh, additionally, there was a Bitcoin on that computer uh, to the tune of 18 million, they reported. Uh, this is one of the big pieces of evidence that they're going to utilize. Uh, throughout their opening statements, they painstakingly wanted to paint the picture that like that triple P alliteration there. Uh, they wanted to paint the picture painstakingly that Ross is profiting from all of the people selling drugs on, on the website and that without him uh, administering and creating the website, all of these people wouldn't be able to engage in this illicit commerce. And I, I believe that they're using this language repeatedly in order to uh, in order to further the narrative that he was engaged in conspiracy, conspiratorial enterprises, and also one of the things he's being charged with is continuing a criminal enterprise, which is also known as a kingpin charge, which is generally reserved for mafia dons and drug lords. Um, they also repeatedly referred to him as a drug lord and uh, talked about the activities. One thing also that was revealed is that uh, early on in his uh, efforts to build this website, he would uh, confer with one of his friends from college that was a computer programmer and ask him for advice on how to program the website. His friend became suspicious about what it was and asked him questions. He said it was a secret project. He said, I'm not going to help you anymore unless you tell me the secret. And apparently he revealed to his friend, Ross Ulbrich revealed to his friend that, uh, uh, that he was working on Silk Road. And the state indicated that his friend is in fact going to be a witness. Uh, another witness that's going to be, uh, that's going to present evidence is going to be someone that was a drug dealer on Silk Road who presumably was arrested and offered a deal and he's going to be testifying against uh, Ross Ulbrich. Uh, so the, the prosecutor was very eloquent. Um, the manner in which he communicated seemed convincing like he was certain of what he was communicating. Uh, he closed down by saying the evidence will show uh, if you use your common sense, he gave three points of advice, if you use your common sense, if you follow the judge's order, I forget what the third one was, uh, then you will find the defendant guilty of all the charges. He also uh, brought up that uh, Ross was so serious about his criminal enterprise that he was willing to use violence if anybody got in his way. And of course he's referring to the alleged murder for hire charges. Uh, which are in fact non-charges in this trial, however he is being tried for that in a state uh, court in Maryland. Uh, but that was allowed to be entered in, um, even to the defense's objection, they entered a motion to try to have that struck and not allow the prosecution to enter that. But it is going to be entered, which of course isn't going to play well uh, for Ross's character in the eyes of the jury. Uh, the defense took the floor in order to provide uh, their opening statements. And I was curious at this point what they were going to counter with. Uh, what's going to be their angle? What narrative are they going to paint? And it appears that the defense is going to be demonstrating that apparently Ross is the victim of the real Dread Pirate Roberts. They uh, admitted that Ross actually created Silk Road, but they said after a couple of months of administering the site, it became too stressful and he decided to put it down. Uh, they went on to say that the real Dread Pirate Roberts, uh, whether it's one or multiple people, they became aware that they were being surveilled and tracked by the government, and 
when that happened, they decided they were going to set Ross up and he was going to be the fall guy. I'm not sure how the defense is going to uh, overcome the computer. At one point he mentioned that BitTorrent was open on Ross's computer when he was arrested. I don't know if they're going to try to infer that somebody had hacked into his computer, but uh, from the prosecution's opening statement, it sounds like there's a lot of evidence. So. It remains to be seen exactly how the defense is going to overcome this, but we do know the narrative and the angle that the defense is going to be taking again. That is that Ross is a victim of the real Dread Pirate Roberts and that they have set him up. So uh, that was basically uh, the introduction on the defense's behalf. We then took another break and uh, when we came back we heard from the first witness of the state and uh, it was a special agent with the Department of Homeland Security Investigative Services who was stationed at Chicago O'Hare. And uh, they gener he deals with narcotics as well as human trafficking and customs violations. And he said that they generally find drugs that come through, but he started finding uh, mysterious uh, drugs that were out of the ordinary. I'm sorry, the packaging that these drugs were found in was out of the ordinary because he said they were professional and they looked like commercial envelopes. And he started to see multiple ones and they all had ecstasy in them from Amsterdam. So he noticed this pattern, started looking into it more. Pretty soon he said uh, that the drugs that they got at that airport went up a thousand times, he said, and they were starting to roll in heavily and steadily, and now he was finding heroin, cocaine, molly, uh, methamphetamines. He started investigating more, and uh, he was turned on to Silk Road. He logged into Silk Road. He said at one point he had uh, five different accounts that he was utilizing, and he was able to find the dealer that offered those very same drugs, had similar packaging. He said that the drugs looked very similar to the ones that they had captured. He showed evidence, these envelopes, the labels, the drugs that were in them. At one point they showed an exhibit that was a picture of stacks and stacks of boxes. It must have been like 30 or 40 boxes stacked up on top of one another that apparently are held in a vault in Chicago O'Hare that are full of these envelopes and full of these drugs. Uh, this uh, special agent uh, also gained access to one of the administrative accounts to one of Ross's employees. Uh, apparently this person was arrested and they gave them access to the account and he operated that administrative employee account until the very day that Ross was arrested. So in this capacity he was able to get a good understanding of how it works and uh, tomorrow morning at 9.30 he will continue on with the evidence that he's presenting. Um, uh, there was something else I wanted to mention that uh, the special agent... Can we just point out something that's obvious yes. that the um, the border inspectors uh, have the authority unlike other um, uh, law enforcement agents they have the authority to go through mail without a warrant yes that was actually something that uh, the defense attorney objected to when the prosecution prosecutor asked the witness if they need warrants uh, in order to search through that he said objection unlike the trials I've watched before they didn't indicate what he was objecting to um, but uh, the, the judge quickly overruled that objection. So uh, this special agent, uh, what I was going to say earlier is that he, uh, he gave the jury and the courtroom a tutorial on how Tor works, the Onion Router, which is an alternative internet browser that allows you to browse the internet anonymously where you can't track the IP address. And he showed a screenshot video that he did where there's a website that'll locate your IP address and show what it is. He popped that <coughs> website on on the normal web and uh, it showed up as his location and his IP address. He then logged into the Onion Router and popped that same website in and it showed up as an IP address in Germany. And then he showed a website with the dot .onion uh, URL, which is that the websites that you can access uh, secretly through Tor. And he tried to put one of those in on a normal address, it wouldn't show up. He put it in on the Onion Router and it did show up. So this gentleman seems uh, highly knowledgeable about the inner workings of uh, the deep web and he seems like he's gonna be a pretty compelling uh, uh, witness for the state. However, there still has not been any indication from this witness that Dread Pirate Roberts has anything to do with Ross Ulbricht. I believe that the state. Oops, that wasn't my phone. I believe that the uh, the state is, is simply using this uh, attorney. Or I'm sorry, this uh, witness to show how big the Silk Road Enterprise was and also to educate the jury about some of this technology that many of them had probably never heard of. There were a few young people on the jury, so perhaps they've heard about Bitcoin, but I doubt any of them had surfed the, the dark web. Uh, the judge also instructed them uh, not to go home and 
search anything. She said not to get on tour, <laughs> which was pretty funny. But uh, that's the update for today. Well, let's, let's Here we are, one very cold. Thing, What's and that? That is My what, the, that is what the, um, that the defense is saying, that us being out here with our signs as well as ah, yes. Asia, is actually detrimental to his case and that the judge has said that if we're out here tomorrow that um, exercising what is lawful um, that she will sequester the uh, the jury and that that will be detrimental like I said to to Ross's case now to to that's something up for consideration, but right now what we're doing is actually <laughs> against the rules also. Where we happen to be standing, we were told that we could not stand here, but we all came over and stood, and we went inside. They said, no, you can't stand there. But we continued to press on and do what we were doing anyway, and they stopped bothering us. So I really do want to encourage people like to keep on pressing on and exercising your humanity and exercising your choice and exercising your will and to push back continuously against the state. Period. Yeah, I wrote a, uh, a piece and audio recorded it for the Sovereign BTC podcast on Let's Talk Bitcoin, and it was basically how this trial, to me, represents control versus freedom. And uh, that was an example of control versus freedom. They wanted to control us. Uh, I was about to acquiesce, potentially, and then everybody shows up. It's like, what are you talking about? Hell no. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot the crew that I'm with here. It's great. <laughs> uh, and they ended up backing down, which was pretty, uh, which felt pretty good. Um, I'll just uh, give a quick uh, wrap-up on the activism that's taking place here. Uh, there were several reporters with independent media, among them the Liberty Beat inside. We uh, were told that we would be able to bring our smartphones in, and we were planning on live blogging and live tweeting with up-to-the-minute updates. Instead, I have about 22 or 23 pages of notes to type up. Uh, so we're in there handwriting, and you can expect us to bring you reports uh, upon the closing of uh, the day's proceedings. Uh, outside, there were activists here. Uh, there was a lot of people inside also showing support for Ross, uh, among them Ross's parents. And uh, there were activists out here that were passing out jury nullification pamphlets, which Michelle alluded to earlier. So it's great to see this awesome uh, Liberty and Bitcoin community that's traveling from all across the country to come here and stand in solidarity with Ross Ulbricht and to make sure that we're getting uh, the true news out there. Uh, there's AP up there, Reuters is up there. There's also some great outlets like ARS Technica and uh, some of these other alt media that are becoming more mainstream. Uh, they do a better job of reporting than the mainstream media. but. You're not going to get a better story, a more authentic story, a story that's geared towards those who care about liberty and care about cryptocurrency uh, than from the activists within the community. So uh, I'm going to close with that. Thanks for everybody that's participating. If you're watching this tonight, these trials are suspected and expected to go on for four to six weeks. So you still have an opportunity to get out here. You can uh, coordinate with Michelle on Twitter at, at Bitcoin Bell. Also, uh, Julia Turiansky is doing some organizing. You can contact her at bravetheworld.com. So, uh, if you care about freedom, if you care about internet freedom, there's a lot at stake. Uh, of course, they're trying to try and charge, uh, convict, judge, uh, uh, convict Ross with uh, the crimes and the activities of people that used his website. It's the doctrine of transferred intent, which to my knowledge has never been done on an internet website. So there's a lot of dangerous precedent that could be set, whereby if you host a website and somebody conspires to do something illegal in the comments section, or even Craigslist, if Craigslist owners, people start doing illegal activity, start doing, people continue to do illegal activity on Craigslist, they could be held responsible. So there's a lot at stake, so I would implore you to get down here. There's still time. Come stand in solidarity with us and stand in solidarity with Ross. Peace, thelibertybeat.com, watchmybit, beta.watchmybit.com.